Welcome to another week of faction battles featuring world competitors. Um, this time we have four matchups this week, and the pair that we have this time we have not seen them before yet. So let's take a look at them and their achievements. The format that we take a look at today is surprise open gray league. These players also are playing open gray league. We haven't had them before. On the left we have from Sweden Bibelicious. On the right we have a shady equation from Canada. Let's take a look at the achievements of these players first before we go into the matchups. Bibelicious is one of, if not the most efficient baller that I know. He doesn't play a lot of tournaments. I don't think he even plays a lot of PvP at all, to be honest. But he just does so well in the few that he plays. The first tournament that he played was the Arlington Play Pokemon Regional 2023. And he got to second place there. He qualified in the United States. I believe his wife lived there. That's why that's his first tournament that he played. And he uh, he had a tough matchup against Doombuck, who first had the bracket reset and then won again against Bibelicious. Still qualifying in a very stacked tournament. Good performance. Now, his first European regional took until May of 2023. One of the last European regions, I think the semi-last uh, Malmo, where he lost to Zephy Masix from Germany, an absolute ABA master. I remember playing at the EYC that I needed a double boosted obstacle to overcome that uh, ABA flyer from him. Um, anyway, again, didn't win, but such a good performance. Many players wish they would get to second. And again, a very stacked tournament too. The third achievement that I listed here is that he and the Snover Tappers, uh, they brag a lot uh, about the competition with us um, in, in factions. Well, unfortunately, factions is no more for both of us, actually. We both uh, got knocked out of worlds uh, against everyone's uh, expectations. But regardless, uh, the second season, the third cycle, they finally won it. Uh, based on battles um, uh, battles won. We have the same amount of match points here, but they have like 20 more wins, so very well deserved. The last achievement that I have there, um, he won the European Continentals for Sylph uh, back to back, which is crazy. He didn't like play any Sylph at all in between. He just qualified for the next Continentals because they invite the winner of the previous one, and he just won it again. With a Bastidon, yes. He had a pretty wicked strategy behind that. So, uh, Bibelicious is like... I feel like his gameplay is quite simple, but it's so clean, right? Every execution is just perfect to it. And uh, even though he might run some of the hardest meta, uh, some of the most boring Pokemon, I would not be surprised if uh, he knocks me out of worlds, to be honest. Will be fun to see him. Now, let's take a look at Shady Equation. A Shady Equation, one of the best players currently living in... Canada, just behind Yasser Elite, and uh, also a rival of Dilap Churn. I don't know if they're rivals or friends. They have kind of a weird relationship. Anyway, um, he went to play in Toronto 2023 first. That didn't go very well, but then he played in Portland 2023, and he got to third place there, just behind Rubik's Master, as you see in the cutscene on uh, right, at uh, behind its accent, which is... If you play uh, in a tournament with its action, you have to keep that into account that uh, being second is actually first. Because that place usually is reserved for its action. Um, the second achievement I uh, have listed here, I couldn't find a lot of uh, wins. Maybe I, I missed one. I know he participated quite a couple times in the Go Battle League Arena. Um, and it's no surprise because look at all those achievements in uh, the Go Battle League. He's always been on the leaderboard. Um, he always finish, finishes as well on the leaderboard. He hasn't always been named a Shady Equation in game. His former name was Ishadiation. So maybe if you recognize that name. Yes, that is this guy. Um, so yeah, really good Go Battle League player. They got third in Portland. Qualified there. Unfortunately, won't be attending World. So hopefully that's a buy for me. Uh, so I have a shot. Anyway, let's take a look at the matchup. So these are the teams we have on the right. Again, a show 8, ban 2, block 2. The Pokemon that are blocked and cannot be banned are colored in green. And a Shady Equation has quite the favorable pick in the Altaria. That has a pretty good matchup against Lickitung. However, you do lose the ones. And against that Medicham. So that looks kind of neutral there. But I think the bans for a Shady Equation look quite obvious. Because you can free up the Altaria entirely by banning that Galarian Stunfist and the Alolan Ninetales. 
for B Malicious. His core is only really broken by Noctowl. I would expect that to be bad. And then he has a little bit more flexibility because Lick Lickitung and Metachamp is a really good core without that Noctowl. Let's take a look at the bands here. We see that a Shady Equation banned the Galarian Stunfist and the Alolan Ninetales from B Malicious uh, simply to free up the Altaria likely and it also gives that lantern some more play and on a shady equation side we see uh that bibelicious banned the swampert and the noctowl noctowl makes sense swampert i think he just finds it annoying um i i don't know it only really frees up that uh lantern like charizard two shields is freaking great against swampert so yeah uh let's take a look at these battles here we have on the left bibelicious we have on the right a shady equation Let's see, the Sableye Mirror here. This really comes down to who wins that CMP. And if both players obviously are staying in. And we see here that a Shady Equation pulled out that more attack-weighted Sableye to take this matchup here. And let me let the first move go immediately. Um, I like this play from Bibalicious. Also, bringing the Charizard. Risky when there's a Lantern on the opposing side. Um, a Shady Equation didn't bring it, fortunately. However, I don't know if, if Charizard is the one that deals with that... Uh, with an Altaria. However, we see a catch here from Bibalicious. Keeping that foul play from the Sableye. The opposing Sableye from Shit Equation. It's not going to do much anymore. And in comes the Registeel to a hard, hard, hard answer this Leaky Tongue. This is not a matchup you want to be in. Now, here's the thing that I'm wondering. It might be Dragon Breath Charizard for just a little bit of a better Altaria matchup. Again, it's, it's still terrible. Uh, well, not terrible, but it's still not great because chairs are so fragile. Pretty sure that the Dragon Breaths from Altera do just about as much. Slight uncharge from uh, from a shady equation there. It gets a few more locks in, which is nice, I guess. However, now Charizard is uh, about to come in. It is wing attack, but Registeel has an energy advantage here. Um, it might be possible that the Registeel completely outpaces here if Bibelish goes straight Blast Burn. And we see the first attack drop there. Now, Blastburn definitely will one-shot or, or, or KO the Registeel from this uh, from this range. And we see a no-shot from a Shady Equation right away. Going for that double-shielded Altaria. Uh, genius yet uh, obvious play, kind of. And you don't want to be in this matchup as Bivalicious. Uh, because you are single debuff now. This Dragonclaw won't, should do about 40%. It's going to do a little bit less now. Yeah. Won't take the Altaria into the yellow yet. It's also very easy for a Shady Equation. Well, not easy, but easier to catch because you have a one-turn move. So there's no option to like wait a turn here for Bubalicious because Dragon Red's one turn anyway. Uh, and oh, that hurts for Bubalicious. The Dragon Claw is caught. And that might actually be necessary because he also has a foul play store. So let's say you need to use that shield here. Then the, uh, the next Dragon Claw would KO or the foul play. Now you have the foul play store, but Bibli is not throwing it. That catch, very good catch from uh, a Shady Equation, as he did not get the two charge attacks here. So um, he could have lost otherwise if he did not uh, catch that move. So well played. That's 1-0 for a Shady Equation. Let's take a look at game number two here. We have the shiny Altaria into the Registeel and swapping out immediately. You know, Altaria is actually not the worst against Registeel. But you rely on getting no debuffs and not throwing the zap cannon. Uh, sorry, the file blade for the zap cannon. That means you get debuffed. Probably. No, he does not get debuffed. All right. So that makes his matchup very, very manageable. Let's see what the shield equation does here. No shield again. Perhaps keeping those shields for that Altaria again. But these file plays are going to add up a ton here. And a shield equation doesn't really have a hard answer with him. Altaria double steal. What he has left. Zappy coming in. Zappy no shielded. This will put the save line into the deep red, I believe. Yep. Well, not deep red, but it is definitely red. Uh, you probably only get to one charge stack here, and Bibelish is no, so he's going for that return. Uh, this will do about forty percent, I think, with that, with the with that single stage attack drop. Yeah, barely doesn't get into the yellow. Keeping the save life, which is smart because now you might be able to use it for uh, a catch later. And I think we saw power punch, ice punch there from that meta champ. Thunderbolt coming through. You kind of don't want to eat a second one, but uh, it's dynamic punch actually. That makes that makes the red steel and the Galarian stuff is more manageable. It makes perfect sense. You don't really need a lot of psychic only for the opposing uh, meta champ here. 
I don't think you can count it down, can you? Oh man, throwing on that CMP, the lantern survives at 1 HP. That really sucks. Otherwise, you come out with so much energy that you can use on the back line. Because neither of the back line can really uh, take that energy. Ice Punch coming in here. On that Altaria, it's obviously shielded. Uh, he only has one shield left. But now you don't get to a second Ice Punch. And you completely rely on that Altaria to clean up here in the mirror. And a Shady Equation has an energy advantage. All right, so this might come down to a catch again. First Sky Attack coming through. Gotta shield this one. Otherwise, you get Dragon Breath down because it's super effective. Let's see. I'm really waiting for that catch moment. And look at that counting from people. He's just throwing. He would have seen Peter, actually. So, is it, is it genius? I don't know. Let's see. Is he going to try to catch? And look at that. This is something I love to see. Your opponent might just be waiting and waiting and guessing when you're going to throw. And you just throw immediately. And Bibelicious did not expect it. Uh, goes down with the Altaria, then goes down with the save light. That's a 2-0 score currently for a shady equation. Bibelicious not really being able to get a grip on this matchup. It is a tough one uh, nonetheless, but I think he had a good shot in this one though. Um, generally, when you swap your save light into a red shield though, you probably want to throw your foul play first because if you get debuffed, it will do less and that makes the matchup worse. Next matchup, we see... A uh, very similar line that Bibelish had in the first game. Uh, I think Shady Equations is always bringing the same Pokemon in. And catching on the uh, on the Lantern, which is interesting. Probably trying to bait out that Registeel because a Shady Equation doesn't have a lot of great answers here. Um, but man, this Pokemon doesn't take the foul plays very well here. Not as well as Lickitung. And man, if uh, Shady Equations is just staying in, he might actually go into the Altaria now to farm down. No, it looks like he's still staying in. Maybe trying to catch a server or something. No, just staying with the save line. This won't KO it. And man, look at that. A Thunderbolt may have KO'd. May... I think that would have KO'd. And look at that. Oh my god. A catch on the surf. Disgusting. A great play from, uh, from a Shady Equation because that's resistant. He would have loved to get the Thunderbolt off here. I think he may barely have gotten that. Goes into the Licky Tongue there. Um, realizing it's very likely to register you in the back. And then this is where Lickitung has a better matchup. Sableye. Um, a Shady Equation doesn't have any... He doesn't have Pokemon. He only has one Pokemon weak to Sableye. Right? The Metachem. I'm guessing that's why he's not bringing it. Because he knows that the Sableye from Bibelicious is gonna, always going to come out. Right? There's no hard answer for the Sableye on the Shady Equation side. Other than Heart Bulk from Registeel, Altaria, Lantern, uh, Galarian Stunfisk. And, well, there's the Mirror. In which he wins a CMP as well. So he's not entirely weak to that... Uh, say what I look at that. Barely not getting the sky attack off. It's actually quite big. Going in with the Registeel and now swapping in that Sableye, which has an energy advantage. So that's actually quite good. I'm not, I don't remember, I don't recall exactly how much energy a Shady Equation had on that Sableye, but maybe Blish is able to take a point, one point here. Um, what you also need to keep in mind, Leaky Tongue just kind of uses at this point. But Registeel can never stack two moves. So if at some point you can swap into that uh, Leaky Tongue again, the Registeel has to expend oh, at least 75 energy on it. Killing the first move here that makes perfect sense and the attack drop, uh, that's unfortunate. But uh, yeah, that's uh, that's what it is. And again, again, he does it again. He does it again. He catches again. I don't I don't think you can win this anymore now. That's a great catch out from Bibelicious. Uh, sorry for my shady equation. Go for another Zap Cannon here. You do get two foul plays. You do get two foul plays as Bibelicious. You do get two foul plays. And another attack drop. Swapping into that Licky Tongue to clear it right away. And at this point, a shady equation needs quite the undercharge. Because again, this Licky Tongue is not that healthy. But you need to expend so much energy on this as the Registeel. Which really sucks. Going for that Zap Cannon here. And going for that undercharge. Let's see if this is perfect. Because he needs more lock-ons. That is a little bit too much. Only gets a few lock-ons in. And at this point, I think that the foul play with the Shadow Claws might do it. He might even get the two. No, I think I don't think I think it's Shadow Claws down on the red steel. Yeah. The save lie is cleared from the debuff entirely, and that will take out the red shield. So it looks like uh, despite that really good catch, a shitty equation played out of his mind here. Um still Bibelish has managed to take one point in a difficult matchup. His Sableye was very good here. 
But so was Alteria, and Alteria just outbulked everything there. So slightly favorable matchup for a Shade Equation, I would say. But even if you have that, you still have to, you know, get those points. So, and so that concludes the group stage for both Bibalicious and a Shade Equation and their faction Snow for Tappers and Elite TMs. That uh, the group stage it looks like the Metal Raptors from India conquered Group Four. And uh, it w then came down to elite TMs or snow tappers who had to battle it out against each other. And it looks like that, uh, as you see by the battle wins, snow tappers only got 22 points in three bouts, which is not great. Unfortunately, elite TMs just did way better. Uh, very hard losses to the Metal Raptors, uh, uh, lo losing 6 15 and then 5 16 to elite TMs. Fortunately, knocked out snow tappers, one of the best European. Factions. Uh, so yeah, we will see more of Elite TMs perhaps next week. Uh, thank you guys for submitting these battles uh, and hope you liked the video. See you in the next one.